today we are in the second Sunday of Advent. All right, and we're going to be discussing with one another the word and the concept of peace. Now, if I were to walk up here this morning and say to all of you, Shalom, what might I be saying to you? If you've heard that greeting before, you would understand it as a common Jewish greeting. Shalom, or Shalom Alachem, means peace be with you. So if you were to travel to Israel or go to places that have a large Jewish population, someone might greet you by saying, Shalom, peace be with you. Or we say to one another, hey, how's it going? They pronounce a blessing on each other. May God's peace be with you. Yet this word shalom that we're going to be talking about today, this concept of peace, it is so much more than just a greeting. It is so much deeper than that. That as a biblical term and as a concept that we get from God, shalom is so much more than a simple definition of peace. Today, as we discuss peace, we're hopefully going to be developing an understanding of God's peace, not worldly peace. But an understanding of God's peace and why it is important to an overall understanding of who Jesus is, why he came, and what he does in each of our lives as believers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at a proposed definition of peace. And we're going to do that from Scripture. And we're going to look in Scripture because while the world might have one perspective on things, God's Word has another perspective. God's word brings us to hopefully view things from God's point of view, that our hearts can be made into hearts like his. So today, let us try to adopt a faith-filled biblical perspective and look at how God's peace is something that all of us need and all of us should be receiving from the Lord. To do that, the definitions of peace that are commonly proposed, if you were to open up any basic dictionary and you look up the word peace, it's probably going to tell you something very similar to an absence of conflict. That's the worldly definition of peace. That there's just no conflict. That things are going okay. That it's smooth. There's no problems. But when we look in scripture and every time that there is peace that is discussed. The peace that God gives us. The, the peace that comes from him. A more, a more well-rounded or a biblical definition of the world, word peace especially when it comes to the Hebrew term shalom, would be, the clicker's not working. There we go. Shalom, wholeness, or wholeness which comes from God. They're quite a bit different. An absence of conflict, or wholeness, a wholeness which comes from God, an, in, an internal feeling, a spirit feeling, a heart feeling of being made Full or complete or whole. If we look at it this way, if, if we look at these two different definitions, one of conflict, one of or absence of conflict, and one of peace, or one of wholeness, then that would mean that peace isn't, isn't that moment when the kids are finally in bed and the house is quiet and there's no conflict. That is peace, but it's not a wholeness of peace. The wholeness that comes from God, the peace that comes from God. God's shalom would be when the kids are finally in bed, but they keep getting up every three minutes because they've got that random question that you don't know how to answer. They need a drink for the 50th time. They always have to go to the bathroom because now they've had 50 drinks. And you're about to lose your cool, and you're reflecting on the day. You know what? I already lost my cool twice today. Maybe I shouldn't lose it again. I'm going to be calm and get these kids in bed. And you're wondering now, did that fourth cup of coffee keep me from having a breakdown? Or am I going to have a breakdown because I have that fourth cup of coffee? And these kids are pushing me to the edge. And in that moment, you take a breath, and you say, God, I need you. And in that moment of chaos, you also experience peace. Because you take a breath, you pray to God, and you sense his spirit in the room with you. And it's almost like you're breathing in the presence of God. My friends, that is peace. That is a glimpse of God's wholeness that he longs for your life to have. Peace isn't just the absence of conflict. It is a sense of wholeness. It's that feeling that when that winter storm finally hits, it's been predicted on the news. The storm you've been preparing for, 
You've moved bales for a better windbreak. You've got the heifers that look anywhere near calving up near the barn. The current pairs that you do have are in the barn so that hopefully they don't get pulled away from each other. The sun goes down. You've made everything as protected as you can. You have worked as hard as you can that day, and you need a moment. And so you're in your garage or your mud room, and you take a seat. And you know that I'm going to be back out there in an hour to check them anyway. So in that moment, you take a step. And you pray and you say, you know what, God, I've done all that I can. And now I need you. I need you to show up. You pray for his protection. And deep inside you realize, I'm not alone. I've put in the work that I need to. And now I just have to trust in God. And your heart feels full. That, my friend, is a glimpse of peace. It's a glimpse of peace and it has nothing to do with the absence of conflict and hardship. And it has everything to do with being connected to God. The thing is that those small, rare moments, those glimpses of peace, they are not supposed to be rare. They're supposed to be the norm. We shouldn't be a people who allow ourselves to be pushed to the edge before we experience peace. It should be peace that we're seeking at all times and in all places. But it's not rare. It slowly becomes the norm. So when we're called a people of peace in Scripture, it doesn't mean that we don't have conflict. It means that we are working toward wholeness in God. The peace we see in the Bible describes what it is to be connected to and have a right relationship with God. It is a wholeness that only comes by experiencing His peace in this world. And I don't know what age you all are. You're anywhere from zero to... I would say a hundred, but there's some older than that that are tuning in right now. <laughs> but whatever age you are, peace is something that you long for. It is a sense of wholeness and peace and protection that comes with the very first cry of a child to the very last breath of those that you love. My friends, we all have a longing for peace. We all have a longing for it. And last Sunday, as we began discussing Advent, and we lit this candle of hope, and we talked about the light and the darkness, and that small glimmer of hope that people can have in the midst of turmoil, we looked in Isaiah chapter 9, which was written around 700 years before Jesus was even born, and in there, there is a prophesied light that will come from Galilee. And so we looked at how Jesus is the fulfillment of that prophecy. But we also looked at a little bit of historical context that when Isaiah wrote this to God's people, the nation of Israel, we learned about how they were divided within, that their kingdom had been separated by civil war. We also learned about how they were being conquered from without, that there was an external enemy that was conquering them. It was a time of great darkness, conflict and turmoil on every side. And in the midst of that, God sends a message of hope, and of light. And today as we continue looking at Isaiah. We're also going to see that the promised hope. Is also the bringer of peace. Because my friends it is Jesus who brings peace. It's Jesus that ultimately brings peace. Not only to us but to the world. And so in Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 through 7. We read these words. It says, for, uh, to, for to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Peace, my friends, comes from God and God alone. That peace that we all have a longing for, that sense of wholeness that we desire, because we know there's something within us that is lacking it. That peace only comes from God. A lot of times when I talk about that spot within us that something is lacking and we know that something is missing, that's also something that we often try to distract ourselves from. That when we realize there's something wrong, not just with the world, but there's also something wrong in my heart. And that my soul has the small part that's missing from it because I know I need to be connected to God, but I'm not. My friends, we try to distract ourselves from that feeling all the time. I talk with friends about 
how COVID has disrupted funerals and we're not allowing ourselves to mourn and grieve like we used to. We no longer gather together for a moment of communal grief that we're isolated in it. And how when we do get back together, hopefully, hopefully it's a reminder of how we need to remove distractions from our lives. Because funerals, in the generations that we have had them, they have moved from something that were people used to mourn for a long time. You would be a widow or a widower for a set number of years so that you could grieve the loss of someone you love from your spouse. Losing a child, it wasn't just a, hey, you know what, it's been two months, I'm okay. It's an acknowledgement of this pain that is so great, it almost overwhelms me. Death now has become a one-hour prayer service, a 30-minute sermon to, or a eulogy, and then a 10-minute graveside service. Anything longer than that, we're pulling out our phones and checking the weather, seeing what the score is, checking the news. Because within all of us, we realize there's something broken. And only God can provide a healing for that. It is only his peace that fills that place. My friends, God is a God of peace. He is shalom. And he brings us shalom. This peace of God that all of us have a longing for, a wanting for, a desire for. It's there for us. But if we understand that, wow, it's complex, it's deep, and it's far-reaching, it affects every area of my life, maybe it's something I'm, I'll never fully understand. And that might be true. Even with the saving faith in Jesus Christ and being connected with God, there might be a peace that is somehow out of your reach that only comes when we shed this mortal coil. Yet it's something that we all long for and should be reaching for. And so maybe we say, well, if that peace is so complex, that shalom is so complex, then maybe we can just achieve worldly peace instead. I'll go buy a cabin by a lake and won't have the news turned on. I'll get rid of my social media and I'll finally have some peace. That is until a neighbor moves in and you don't like them. They do things different than you, right? <laughs> There's always going to be conflict in this world. Always. We know that this world has fallen. We know that we are fallen. There will be conflict. God's word, it tells us that. But maybe, maybe, maybe shalom is too hard, so we'll just find some worldly peace. How successful have we been at doing that? As an individual, you might get some temporary peace in this world. But how about as a people group? How about as a nation or a country? Our collective and verifiable history as a group of people, you know, it can only go back so far. Historians are in agreement that in the last 3,500 years, as humanity, we've only known about 270 years of peace. 3,500 years of somewhat known history, and only 270 years of peace. That's 8%. So if we're going to be graded as a collective of humanity on how long we can be peaceful, 8%, I mean, it might as well be zero. It shouldn't even turn it in. Hope for a redo, right? 8% of our known history has been peaceful. America turns 244 years old this year. And in those 244 years, we've only had 15 years without some major conflict or war. It's been 20 years since we've been in a war. Excuse me, since that we have been in war. Excuse me, 20 years without war. Fathers who were deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan after 9-11 are now being joined by their sons and daughters. We have a whole generation that has only known war and conflict. So then we look at our country and say, wow, why are we such an angry people? Peace has been elusive for all of human history. We as Americans, we consider our nation to be the strongest, most powerful, best country in the world. And to that I would say, God bless America. But my friends, even with all of our power, worldly peace is still elusive. So then if we know all these things, if we know that there's a desire and longing within all of us for that completeness, that wholeness that comes from God, if we realize that peace, worldly peace, human peace, is also something that doesn't seem to be that achievable, then how, my friends, are we to experience peace? Are we to just say, oh, well, never mind, I won't try, I'm just going to give up. Kirk, can you go to the next slide? It's not working. How are we to experience peace? 
Now we know from God's word that we are fallen people. We live in a fallen world. We will have conflict in this world until everything is remade. So while worldly peace is desirable, it's not our end goal at the moment. I think that worldly peace only comes after we begin to know personal peace. Psalm 34, 14 says, turn from evil and do good. Seek shalom or seek peace and pursue it. Last week as we read about hope and light, about how Jesus fulfilled that prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9 to be that light that comes from Galilee. We also read in Matthew chapter 4 verses 12 through 16 that Jesus, he was the fulfillment of that prophecy. So it talks about how he withdrew into Galilee to fulfill what Isaiah had promised, what God had promised in Isaiah. And we stopped at the end of verse 16. But my friends, if we were to continue to verse 17... It says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Now in Psalm 34, where it says, turn from evil and do good. Repent is that same exact word. Repent means to turn from the way in which you were walking and turn back to God. Turn from evil and do good. If we want to experience peace in this world... Yeah, let's look at Psalm 34, turn from evil. Let's look at what Jesus says. Repent, turn from evil, turn back to God. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, seek shalom, seek peace. Draw near God and find his peace in your life. Because when we turn to God, we will begin to understand that as we seek peace, that as we pursue it, that that peace from God is a gift to all of us. Because peace cannot be earned. It cannot be achieved. It is not something where if you score good enough, if you make enough money, if you do everything right, you will have peace. True peace. God shalom. That peace is given. That peace is given. It says, because unto us a child is born. A son is given. And he will be called the Prince of Peace. Peace is under his authority. And so Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Peace is given. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I hope that we all come to understand that the peace of God can only be given to us by God. Now, being given the peace of God, it does not mean that we will not have trouble or pain or hardship. You're still going to get kicked by that cow when you're trying to put it in the head. It's still going to happen, right? You're still going to have trouble with your neighbors or your friends or even your closest family members. You will still have pain and hardship. You will still have it in this world. But in the midst of all of that trouble... We can still have peace because Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33, I've said these things to you that you may have, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. There will be persecution, there will be hate, there will be those that dislike you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. But take heart, I have overcome the world. My friends, peace is what we should be seeking. And as we seek it, you will find that peace is what God gives. In closing, I want to share with you a story from a book called A Wardrobe for a King. And it says, long ago, a man sought a perfect picture of peace and not finding one that satisfied him. He announced a contest for all artists to submit a picture of peace. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere and paintings began to arrive <coughs> far and wide. And finally, the day of the contest arrived. Judges uncovered one peaceful scene after the next. Viewers clapped and they cheered. But tension also grew. Would we find a perfect picture of peace? Finally, only two pictures remained veiled. As a judge pulled the cover on one, a hush fell over the crowd. It was a mirror smooth lake. It reflected lacy green birch. Not yet. <laughs> it reflected lacy green birch on the edges of it, surrounded by 
a nice soft evening sky. Along the grassy shore, a flock of sheep stood grazing. Someone whispered, it looks like the 23rd Psalm. Surely this was the winner and the picture of peace. But the man who had called for the contest, he was the one who unveiled the final picture. And at that picture, everyone gasped in surprise. Could this be peace? This picture was of a raging waterfall cascading down a rocky precipice. The crowd could feel almost the spray of the cold water coming off the painting. Stormy gray clouds exploded with lightning and wind and rain. And in the midst of this thundering noise and bitter chill, this picture of turmoil, there was a small bird that built a nest. You can barely see it in the photo. Yet content and undisturbed in her stormy surroundings, she rested on her eggs. With her eyes closed and her wings covering her little ones, she manifested peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. Go back to that full picture. We could be distracted by the storm, by the raging water. We could look at how inhospitable those rocks are. Yet peace is still present. Into a world of turmoil and darkness and sin, when Jesus was born, angels announced it by saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth. My friends, that is part of our Christmas message. <clears throat> Jesus is the one who was sent to bring peace, not only to the world then, but to the world now, to our hearts now. And this peace, it is a gift that comes from God. Will you choose to accept this precious Christmas gift, knowing that the baby that was sent, the son that was born to us, was also the one who was sent to the cross to die for our sins, so that we could truly know God's peace, so that we could truly be reconciled to him and be forgiven for our sins. Will you accept this precious gift? Will you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who was sent to save? There are many who reject the gift. They reject what Jesus did for us on the cross. Not everyone who chooses to know Christ chooses to accept Him. They instead say, you know what, I just can't believe. Yet there are those who do. There are those of us We've heard the message. We choose to believe. We enter through that narrow gate. But my friends, we never stop sharing that message of hope. We never stop sharing the light. We never stop <coughs> sharing the peace that we receive from God. I want to invite all of you to consider this Christmas gift of peace. And I want to encourage you to enter into the kingdom of God. Enter into the kingdom of the one who is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Because in him, wholeness can be found. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are the God of peace. We thank you that your shalom is something you desire for all of us to know and experience in our lives. And Father, may those small glimpses of peace that we sometimes get, may they not be the norm, but instead, Father, may those glimpses turn into a full picture and a view of you. May those rare moments, Father, become moments that last days. May we experience your true peace in our lives. Father, we know that, that peace comes to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. He is a gift that you sent to us. May we believe. May we trust. And may we find peace through him. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.